following podcast is presented by Secret Room Multimedia. This is Fairpoint. I'm your Reverend Craig Lewis. And I'm Nathan Capasser. Yes, yes. We have been spiritually achieved. Spiritually achieved. All because I read a few pamphlets online. That's cool. You were saved by Bob. They told me I could become an ordained minister if all I did was pay them a bunch of money to their website. Oh, yeah? They said only $35 to join and I could be an ordained member. And I was like, well, I, I always wanted to be a clergyman. So. Yeah, I'm a I'm an actual ordained minister in the Universal Life Church. Is this a real thing? Yes, I have a certificate. How, I how did I not know I was sit, I was standing across from a holy man this entire time? <laughs> yeah, it was I was like 20 or something. It was a while ago, but yeah, that's that's super sweet. And here I am, just well, you've been sanctioned by J.R. Bob Dobbs. We're gonna get all up in this bitch later. Let's wait until we get to the topic section to do that. Let's go back and reverse a little bit. Yeah, ladies, right. gentlemen, and other... Countrymen? Sure, those two. America and beyond. Check it out. It's our 20th episode. I really cannot believe we actually made it to 20 this time. Uh, yeah. O- this... It only took us two years, right? Yeah. <laughs> or over a full year. <laughs> yeah, I wish we could have done a like year anniversary, but it's like, hey guys, it's our year anniversary. It's and our, it our uh, 17th sixth episode. episode. <laughs> well, actually, it would have been in, like, right when we relaunched. Oh, yeah, like July. It's our relaunch slash one-year anniversary. <laughs> but, hey, 20 episodes. That's pretty cool. Welcome to episode 20. It's our first milestone. And to celebrate this, I got an amazing email from an actual musical artist that supposedly loves me. Really? Yeah, he sent me something just for me. And this was it's to celebrate our 20th shame. episode? No, but... <laughs> But it's just, I, I figured it'd, go, it'd coincide with it. Okay. It's a shame I don't like this guy, though. You ever listen to James Blunt? Uh, yeah, I've heard of him. I, I don't ever listen to him, no. Uh, his voice is really... He emailed you because he scratchy. likes Fairpoint? He, no, not because he likes Fairpoint, because oh. he, he, he wants to do me a favor and have me buy his new album. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. No way, dude. No, th- this, here, check this out. This is this email I get. First off, how the fuck did you get my email account? Well, you gave me your email account. No, no, no. I, no. You, why, James when Blunt. The, oh, I was fan. Saying, when did the topic switch to me? <laughs> if you want me to stop it, emailing you, I'm like, looking at chain you, but letters I'm... about Jesus and kittens. <laughs> I'm looking at you, but I'm talking through you. Okay. To gotcha. James Blunt or gotcha. whoever his manager is or whoever runs his fan site. I don't know. I don't know. But they even know my name, too. Uh, this, this is why Facebook is, is, is bad. I'm sure that's what they got it from. But it says right here, so, ellipses, just for you, ellipses. Here's the first single from my new album. It's called Bonfire Heart. And the first time it'll be broadcast on the airwaves will be on BBC Radio around 11 a.m. this morning and later today in mainland Europe. Now, this is probably, uh, I got this like a week or two ago. Okay. Uh, Whatever, but. Because you signed up for the James Blunt mailing list? Uh, somebody must have, I guess. Or, so but, you're telling me this isn't a personal message? I, you know what? It felt like it was. <laughs> As, <laughs> I felt a connection. <laughs> yeah, a big, strong one. It says, this song's about love, life, fear and hope, ellipses, and more than anything, you, ellipses, and me, ellipses. <laughs> So listen to it, and I am not going to because no, I don't want J- am I. <laughs> I don't want James Blunt to be singing a song about me and him. <laughs> yeah, that'd be. I don't want to listen to him singing Awkward. a song about you and him either. What if everyone else got the email and it was like, but more than anything, it's about me and Craig Lewis. <laughs> but you got it. And it I do. You know, it's about me and you. 
Actually, you know what? I do want to listen to James Blunt's song about Craig Lewis. <laughs> it's got to be interesting. He knows me so well. We've hung out so many times. But he said he really hopes I like the song, and he wants me to let him know what I think. And you don't want that. <laughs> yeah, let him know then. Okay. Well, James I'll Blunt. I'll let you know right here. James Blunt, I just think you're awful. Would you please take me off your mailing list, however you got me? <laughs> <laughs> and you can, uh, if, if you uh, want... Any of our further opinions on your music, you can find us at at Fairpoint Pod on Twitter. It's, Ooh, it's so much. Hey, oh, it's better than email. I mean, it is better than email. It's quicker. <laughs> also, only allows you to put in 140 characters. Oh yeah, and that's better than anything. I mean, why doesn't everyone love Twitter? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. I certainly don't not love Twitter. I certainly don't spend about an extra three to four minutes trying to figure out how to reword a tweet just so I can have it all fit. It's everything Facebook is and less. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. It's just like one portion of Facebook, and it's supposedly the part everybody hates about Facebook, well, knowing Facebook, what you're up to. Facebook finally got rid of the character limitation. Oh, they had one, but it was like really long anyways, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's gone now. Yeah, but I mean, even when they had it, it was still a lot, pretty big limit. I copied and pasted War and Peace. <laughs> it was still Facebook able to status. go through. <laughs> it was like Seymour. <laughs> was that after that they got rid of the limitation that was after obviously after okay well i was saying uh, i was saying it was really long and then you're like you copy and pasted it war and peace is at least 143 characters at least at least <laughs> so i think the title's at least 143 characters you know what you're a character oh my thank you <laughs> cheers to me then cheers to nathan and no cheers goes to james blunt Cheers to J.R. Bob Dobbs. Yeah, way better than James Blunt. Clink. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're not going to buy James Blunt's album? I wouldn't even spend Xbox points on it. Because no. those are so rare to come by. Neither would I, mainly because I don't have an Xbox. And because <laughs> and I don't like James Blunt. Well, well, thankfully for all the Xbox owners out there in the fall of 2013... You're going to be able to just use your hard-earned U.S. dollars, and there's going to be no more point converting. Oh, yeah? I so, think I heard about that. That's Yeah, that's that's something. So it's just going to be straight-up dollar amounts on there instead yep. of, like, 1,600 points and all that? Yeah, 1,600 points or $20, <laughs> you know, whatever. I'm sure that'll be a lot easier for people that work in video game stores. Like you? <laughs> yeah, they don't have to come up and be like, how much is $20 worth of Xbox points? How much is $15? How much is 50 They can just, you just be like, $50 worth of Xbox points is $50. You can afford anything that's just, $50 or less. Just look to the dollar converter up on the <laughs> chart behind you. You pay $50 and you get $50 in Xbox. Money, not points. Now that's what I call a fair deal. <laughs> Okay, we have one news story. That's it? It's big enough to warrant this whole news section, whatever you want to call yeah, it, I'd segment. Say I'd say it's pretty big. It's uh, earth-shattering. Yeah, it's and we've... groundbreaking. We've wanted to talk about this for so long now and haven't talked to each other about it because we had to do the Blurry Photos episode, we had to set all that shit up, and we were like, okay, as soon as we're finished with all that, then we'll talk about it, but we had to wait so it would be natural and real. And now we can finally talk about it. Both conversation and confusion are just oozing from me right now. Yes. Craig, the new One Direction single. Oh my god. Best song ever or not Dude, best song Dude, I'm not ever. prepared for that. I thought we were doing the One Direction movie. <sighs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, no, but seriously. <laughs> not at all what we were talking about. Batman! I'm sure... Anyone listening to this podcast has already heard, Batman has been cast. Batman! But just in case they haven't heard... Aflac. Aflac! Not the Aflac duck. That would be ben an interesting choice. Ben Affleck has been cast as the Batman. Since the time has gone by, a lot of rage has subsided for a lot of people with it, but there's still a huge uproar about it. This is for the Man of Steel sequel... That's now titled Batman vs. Superman. Yeah, so it's not just a straight-up Batman movie. Yeah, he's uh, Ben Affleck's going to pair up against, I guess, Henry Cavill. But initially, there was a lot of fan outrage. Yeah. There's a huge amount of fan outrage. And I feel like it subsided a little in the time that's passed, but it's still there. And, I mean, one day 
after this casting, there was already a petition on the internet to have him recast. Yeah. And I, I think that's dumb. Let let him have his choice. I mean, he's not the best choice for Batman, but he's far from the worst choice. Yeah. I mean, right? George Clooney was the worst choice. No, 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 no. George Clooney was a good cast. Just what was he going to do with a horrible director and horrible direction and a horrible script? And now at least Ben Affleck has a good director. George Clooney could have been good. They should. Uh, you really think so? Yeah. If he yeah. wasn't like hamming it up as the charming George Clooney when he was in the cowl, you know what I mean? Right. right. When he... Don't you think like if he would have been good as Batman, don't you think that would have just overwhelmed him with smug? What do you mean? Like he he would that would have given him like such a sense of smugness and self achievement. If he did a good job, if as he Batman, did a good job as Batman, that maybe he probably would have saying, overloaded early. So you're saying he probably self sabotaged himself. Maybe he knew it was best for the world, as opposed to self sabotaging yeah. someone else. Um, <laughs> He purposefully played the role wrong. No, I think it was probably Joel Schumacher in a horrible script. They could have at least made Robin 16. You know, if I made a new Batman movie, fuck it, and have Nightwing already in it. And just have it like his career's already been established for a while. He's already familiar with most of his villains. So at most, all we need is like maybe a a two-minute flashback to retell the origin of Batman, if that's even necessary anymore. Yeah, everyone knows Batman. Go ahead and have it be a fresh new, like, mystery. You know what I mean? Have him doing some detective work. You can have a few of the villains show up. It would be great. And I think that's why the Arkham games have been so successful, because everybody knows Batman. Batman, as he's already established, and detective work. Yeah, dude, I would love it. I would absolutely love it. But back to Batman. Batman. Batfleck. I've heard. Ooh, I like that one. See, the first one I heard was was Ben Man, and I'm like, that's not even. No, Ben Man. <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't hey even guys, make it seem. It's me, Ben Man. He's already Ben Man. <laughs> <laughs> He's been bad Ben Man for thirty plus years. Some robbers like snatching an old lady's purse in an alley. I don't know why the old lady was cutting through the alley, that night, but she <laughs> yeah. was, and she's like, "No, no!" And then he's like, "Hey, step off, pal!" And it's just Ben Affleck. <laughs> it's just like, and like he's a gray like, suit. And what tie. are you, some fucking wise guys? <laughs> no, I'm Ben Man. Ah, you a knucklehead. <laughs> he stabs him. He's like, "Oh God, oh God." <laughs> Lady, you're on your own. (laughs) Lady, but he's got a knife. Why would you take this stupid shortcut through a dark alley anyways? Just get a cab. Just take the purse and leave us alone. (laughs) I would have given you money for a cab. I'm rich. Then the robber's like, wait, you're rich? Holy shit, you're Ben Affleck. Give me your fucking watch. No, I'm Ben Man. I'm not not Ben Affleck. I know him. We're good friends. I'm in deep cover studying for a role that's going to be coming soon. Yeah. Ben Man begins. Oh, oh, but... Ben Man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook friends. Wah! Ben Man is absolutely a horrific name. <laughs> he's, he's been Ben Man for 36 years. I've been calling it Bat Ben. Bat Ben is... It makes is... way more sense. Bat Fleck. I liked that one. Bat Fleck works. But I think that everybody brings up his role in Daredevil and how awful it was. Or even Geely, which I don't know what we're acting in Geely has to do with anything. <laughs> At least Daredevil, it's another comic book role. But that was before, you know, Disney owned Marvel and they took any of those I mean, comic on. book movies I mean, seriously. That's like, oh, they're casting George Clooney in a movie? George Clooney can't act. Hasn't anyone seen Batman and Robin? <laughs> like, come on. Any, everyone's done bad movies. Like, yeah, of course. But some people sort of have a point when they bring up the fact that he's done a superhero movie before. But that was a horrible movie with a horrible script, horrible direction. Uh, and he was a lot younger. And I got to say, the man's talented and earned a lot of respect uh, in the past five to ten years, I would say. He's become a respectable writer and director. And he's matured a lot, I think, too. I have no problem with Ben Affleck. I like Ben Affleck. I, I think He's cool in a lot of shit. Also and, paired with somebody that has already established knows the substance that he's using and has done it successfully the first time around. It wasn't a perfect movie. Man of Steel was definitely flawed, but still a great movie. He he knows what he's doing, so who knows, you know? A man that's actually a good actor paired with a good director. Honestly, I mean, I could see... No, Ben Affleck isn't my choice for the perfect Batman. Like of course I not. I still He's... go with Guy Pierce. That was my thoughts on the JLA podcast we did, and those are still my thoughts on my it. My thoughts were Denzel Washington, <laughs> which I still stand by that would be fucking awesome. Sure, why not? Denzel can do anything he ben wants. Ben Affleck's really. not a bad choice. I mean, at worst, I think he'll be on par with anybody who played Batman in the 90s. 
At worst, yeah. And I still think he'd be better than that. Yeah. Like, I, I think he, at worst he'd do as good as Michael Keaton did, and Michael Keaton did a good job. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, if you ask me, I don't know. Yeah, and my, I add, back in 89, when Michael Keaton was originally cast, everybody said, no, that's that he can't do that. Like, that's not Michael Keaton. And it, same thing happened when Heath Ledger was cast, was cast and when Anne Hathaway, Anne Hathaway was cast. And I think most people seem to agree that they did a great job. Anne Hathaway, not as many as Heath Ledger, but... I, love, I don't think I've heard anybody say anything bad about Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah. When Heath Ledger was cast, all anybody said was, oh, the gay dude from Brokeback Mountain, really? Yeah. Or the pretty boy in a knight's tale? No, no. He's a good character actor. And he did a phenomenal job. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to give Ben a chance. All we are saying is give Ben a chance. No, that's it's whatever. Just a If you're chance. with it, you're with it. If you're not with it, you're not with it. I can see both both sides. But uh I'm going to yeah, I'm going to give him a chance myself too. To to the opposing side, I will say if you were excited about this movie, please don't immediately dismiss it and not go see it. Yeah, come on. Dude. At least at least uh at least watch it so then you can have a good stance saying why it's awful. I can totally see Ben Affleck in the cowl. See, here's the thing. Like, it's not like Ben Affleck has any huge iconic person roles. You know, it's not like you're, they're gonna be like, "All I can see is that guy from Jersey Girl." <laughs> That's all yeah, I can right. see. <laughs> and I, I mean, my favorite Batman is Kevin Conroy from the animated series, and I could see Ben Affleck doing a very Conroy-esque Batman. You know, I do like the idea of Bruce Wayne being a little more suave and debonair. Absolutely. Uh, and I think Ben Affleck can do that. Great. So there's for another sure. great choice for Bruce Wayne himself. I think that's a good cast. But... No, it's supposed to be an older Batman in this, too. An older, more experienced Batman. So right. Maybe He's Batman's been, been around a, for a while. This. How cool would it be if Nightwing... Who do you think... Other Batman characters have to appear in this. Commissioner Gordon's got to appear. Oh, should. I can't imagine it's going to involve Gotham City and Superman going there or whatever without right, Commissioner right. Gordon. It can't just be Batman appearing in it, you know? Here's my question, though. It's, it says Batman versus Superman, so Batman's already established, and Superman is inherently good. Why would they be fighting each other? We'll have to wait and see how that's written out. Write yourself into a hole, like Sna- Zack Snyder. Now write yourself out of it. <laughs> like, that hasn't happened in comics numerous times before. There's always a reason. Who knows? It'd be interesting. Who knows? We'll, we'll see how interested. that plays out. I guess we will see how that plays out. Do you think, out. uh... Oh, so what? You're going to get Matt Damon to play Robin now? No, Matt Damon's not going to play Robin. Come on, come on, Matt Damon. <laughs> Zack Snyder's like, guys, guys, get this. Dude, they're going to shit their pants. It's going to be just Matt like Good Will Hunting. Matt going to be Robin. This is going to be so dope. Why would anybody in their right mind do that? Come on, guys. No, so you were, you brought up an in- interesting thing to talk about, maybe. Who else might be in this movie? Yeah, what other Batman characters? What other characters? Batman characters? You think, uh, who would you put as Commissioner Gordon? Would you just say to recast Gary Oldman? Because he was well, a can't great do that. Gordon. Gary Oldman was a, perfect. It's a different fucking universe. Perfect. But yeah, wouldn't you can't just recast him. So it'd be an, if it's a more seasoned Batman, it'll be an older Gordon. I don't know, man. Who would it be a good Gordon? Uh, maybe Arlie Ermey? No. No, that's no. Gordon. <laughs> no. What the fuck? No. Are you you needle crack, nose Craig? dick. Batman, get out of there on that case. <laughs> <laughs> you can drop and give me 20. <laughs> Arlie Gordon, why? Arlie Ermy. Arlie Gordon. Arlie Ermy. No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Just let it go. <laughs> oh, who would be a good Gordon? Send us your thoughts. Who do you think would be a good Gordon in the Superman movie? So who? But what other? What other characters? I feel like you. They wouldn't want to overdo it. But do you think a villain would show up? The villains I think are very iconic. Alfred would show up. Of course, yeah. Uh, there needs to be at least one villain to from Batman's to like segue the both of them in together. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, who knows? I think it'd be cool if they did the Penguin. Yeah. Maybe show like Batman he pulled like a huge heist in. Operations. He pulled a huge heist in Metropolis or something like that, and. Uh, and then Batman goes to Metropolis or something, and then that's when they kind of butt heads with Superman. Who's cast as the Penguin? <sighs> I think College Humor did it perfectly when they cast Patton Oswalt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm not even going to fight that one. I want it to continue. <laughs> Let it ride, baby. Come on. <laughs> I think Catwoman would be too much. Uh, Catwoman, that would be cool, though. Probably the best call would be to have it limit it to yeah an appearance by like the Penguin and Batman Gordon maybe an appearance by Nightwing limit it to mostly you know what I mean just close Bat family Alfred yeah of course Alfred of course you can't 
If Alfred's not in it, that would be ridiculous. Michael Caine was cool, but I hope they go back more towards a traditional Alfred, you know? One that looks more like the comics Pennyworth. Totally. A thin, gaunt man. John Cleese as Alfred. <laughs> that might work. Matt Damon if as he Alfred. It straight? Can you imagine John Cleese playing it straight? I don't he know. He might if be I able can. to do it. Can he play anything straight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Dude, fucking Christopher Lee. As Alfred? Yeah. I don't know. As Raz Al Ghul? Ooh. That would be pretty fucking amazing. Ooh. Okay, we're doing we're we're getting on to the Batman reboot that they scrapped. Oh, Christopher Lee is Raz Al Ghul. Wow. All respect in the world to Liam Neeson, but Christopher Lee is a little more I can use. That would be pretty awesome. Liam Neeson was great, but Christopher Lee would be fucking dope. Matt Damon is Alfred. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> I don't know I don't know I don't know, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce, this is getting pretty serious, Bruce. Let me now. Let me dress your wounds, Master Bruce. I could do all these math problems on this chalkboard here, but I don't know what to do about this whole penguin situation. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you really put me in a tough predicament, <laughs> Bullock. 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 And uh, I mean that—that's something. That's a character you can put in just for fan service, really, and he doesn't even have to have more than three fucking, or four lines. Uh, what's his name? Um. The, the comic I don't know, from the eighties looks... with the leather jackets and and shit. Andrew Dice Clay uh, <laughs> as Bullock. <laughs> you know what? He kind of looks like Bullock now too. <laughs> He's oh, that would be cool. I take that. I take that. As a, are we? I feel like now we're just making a comedy of this movie. <laughs> no, no way. No way. Oh, Batman! Leave the detective work to the real police, huh? <laughs> I tell you everything I think about you, but this movie's PG-13. They won't let me express myself artistically, huh? Oh, man. Instead of saying, fuck, I got a Fugazi. <laughs> Montoya. That'd be cool. That'd be cool to if have Montoya, Montoya appeared too. in it. Now we're just getting into Gotham's finest. Michelle Rodriguez, maybe? I don't know. Yeah! Yeah! Craig <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just turned into the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> oh, yeah! Uh, she's... Yeah, she... It hasn't done anything since Resident Evil movies. Sorry, I can't get past. <laughs> yeah. She was in Machete. She, oh, She'll yeah. She'll probably be in Machete Returns. Do you, do you have to say it like that? Machete. 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 How about Machete? That sounds pronounced Machete. Machete. Machete just sounds so white. <laughs> machete. Well. Uh, machete? I don't know. It's just not the way that machete. the word's pronounced. Machete. Well, it's pronounced that way because it's uh, Mexican. Yeah, but I'm saying machete is like a anglicized version of a Spanish word. Is is like, machete like a karaoke. Spanish word? Like karaoke is karaoke. Karaoke. Is how it's pronounced. Karaoke. Yeah, but you're not gonna walk up to a random person on the stream and like, have you been? You're like, hey, buddy, did you go to karaoke? Didn't last I night? see you last night at karaoke? Mm, I was at karaoke last night. <laughs> yeah, I did, don't stop believing. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Four or five of us joined in. Karaoke. Okay, okay buddy, okay, pal. Well, Why I'll don't we later. swing dance with it? Uh, so, yeah, Michelle Rodriguez. White people be like, karaoke <laughs> and machete. Silly, silly Anglos. Fucking gringos. We're, we were talking about Michelle Rodriguez, right? Oh, yeah, Mich oh, yeah, yeah, because she was in machete. No, but she'd be great Montoya. She's very feisty and uh, tomboyish. And you I know, can totally see her as a lesbian. Yeah. And me and you already agree that uh, Allison Brie should be Harley Quinn. Allison Brie. Totally pull it off. Absolutely. She she could play that totally insane. Watch her Santa Baby clip from uh, the from Community? Christmas season. Yeah, she, three, she completely maybe? sounds like Harley Quinn there. Yeah, it was season she three. Totally the, it. it was the one where uh, they joined the Glee Club. There you go. Check it out. Yeah, I could just see her going, oh, Mr. J, you make me so happy. Of course, there's Craig doing an awful Harley Quinn impersonation. <laughs> Actually, fuck that. Craig Lewis as Harley Quinn. Yeah, I could use the money. There we go. <laughs> I'm not above dressing scandalously, showing off all my sexy curves. Harley Quinn usually wore a full body suit, though. But it was a body suit showing off all her curves. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sexy she was. Also... <laughs> A lot of different reimaginings of Harley Quinn kind of have her wearing like a yeah, skirt of course, and a belly they have shirt. To. You can't have a female character and not have them be half naked for at least some duration of their existence. I think uh, I think they call it Rob Liefeldism. All right, well, 
enough Ben Man. I think it's time to move on to our topic. We'll uh Oh, oh, oh. So we're gonna stop getting silly and start getting serious. No, I don't know about that. But yeah, cause I to be honest, I don't know if you could take this serious what we're gonna be talking about today. You could. I mean you could, and apparently a hundred thousand people plus do. So yeah, getting right to the topic, episode twenty, the subgenius episode. Right after a word from our sponsors. Are you tired of being bored at work, slaving away for those normals? (laughs) Spending all your hours toiling away, not getting the sex you deserve. Well, for most of those things, we can't help you. But by listening to Fairpoint, your day could be 10 to 20% less boring. Don't believe us? Just take it from one of our satisfied customers. Ooh, get away from me, you creep. Why even bother listening to any other f***ing podcast? Fairpoint f***ing podcast, the only goddamn podcast you need to listen to ever again. And to help us continue, you can send us all your money with any money orders to the secret room care of Fairpoint Podcast. The only podcast endorsed by J.R. F- Bob Dobbs. Except for that. Holy f- Luger. Just the facts. The Church of the Subgenius is a contemporary religious belief system founded in the 1970s by Ivan Sang and Philo Drummond that centers around the prophet J.R. Bob Dobbs and the concept of slack. Thank you, William Shatner. Any time, my friend. Yeah, so wow, the Church of the Subgenius is quite the interesting belief system quite the interesting belief system i don't even think begins to describe it Uh, as we said they've been around since the 70s they had their peak of popularity in the 80s and 90s of course according to their mythology they've been around since 1953 isn't that when their prophet the man good old jr yeah jr bob dobbs bob of course you know in parentheses his nickname did I say parentheses? I meant quotations. Sorry. And you did air quotes while saying parentheses. <laughs> that confused me a little bit. <coughs> so do you want to talk about this Bob guy a little bit? Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Does he even exist? I don't even know where to begin with Man, this, this whole is like... shit. No. <laughs> yes. No. Well, I mean, because the there's only picture is the bad of him. Any choice. You choose whether you want to love or hate that person. Yeah, Bob is. <laughs> you know the, the, the hey, 50s Bob's clip art and advertisements and stuff you'd see the dad smiling with a pipe. pipe. That's Bob. That's Jerry Bob. Bob. It's the prophet. The of the all the things that God's where we are now. It's so it's part people. of the church of the subgenius. Or subgenius. It's presidents that don't like they're capable of being erected. He got all these powers from Jehovah. Basically, I would be honest in researching this but probably about the first time. The worst was, when I saw that, I thought it was a typo. The worst I thought it was just Jehovah. I'm like, is this the same thing as Jehovah's Witnesses? Let's back up a second. If you're confused, it's okay. We have no idea where to begin. Like, hopefully it'll start to flow together. Yeah, see, I mean, I don't know if it's going to start to make sense, but it'll start to get some idea of Wouldn't you like revenge on these mediocrities, these pink boys, these box billing barbies and kittens, these normals who make normality the norm? Think so about living stereotypes, insensate these puppets and food eaters who lack and fear the spark of originality that ignites every subgenius soul. Abraham but the long, senseless march into slackness also... may soon come to an end. Yeah. Or oh, it will happen without a bit of struggle. But at least there is hope. For in this, the 20th century, yeah, we have seen the coming of a savior, a beacon of slack, Cthulhu, a banner yeah, behind which we may all unite. It is Yoss, the coming of J.R. Bob and Dobbs and his mighty demons, Church of the Subgenius. Concepts of yeah, he's relatively good. 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 Yeah, he's relat
So this extraterrestrial god Jehovah contacts Bob through the television set, teaches him all sorts of things about the universe, and gifts him with a whole bunch of superpowers. As you mentioned, time travel, time travel, which accounts for inconsistencies and changes in the scriptures and stuff. Time that people really need yeah. to be able to understand things very quickly in the church of Sardinius, I think. That's uh, what they call it. Confuses them. At least they got reasons behind it. I mean, if they contradict themselves, they call it. Well, well, profit time travels. It's hard to keep up. Things change a lot around here. Everything that most subgenius has happened. So everything that was taught to them by Jehovah One during that divine immaculation, as it's called, was written down in what's referred to as the pre-scriptures. Let us observe a few examples. This is the most sacred text of subgenius tradition. I'm not totally sure it actually exists. I feel like maybe it's not real, but it's quoted a lot in like some genius There's sections of the that usually referred to as the subgenius Bible. In parentheses, I mean, quotes. quotes. Uh, but what well, no, that book's called The Book of the Subgenius, Being the Divine Wisdom, Guidance, and Prophecy of J.R. Bob Dobbs, High Epop of the Church of the Subgenius. Here in for the salvation of future generations and in the hope that Slack may someday reign in this world. Is that the entire title? Yes. Oh, it's a long title. That's the book they're selling. I, I believe it was sold. I believe it was given out a lot. Their early literature was disseminated in Texas in America, the early 80s, I believe. Well, they do have a book that they're selling on Amazon. It's called The Book of the Subgenius, The Sacred Teachings of J.R. Yes. I've they shortened it too. They shortened it quite a bit. That was... <laughs> Had to fit the entire title on the cover, so you know it's selling for a stellar sale price of seventeen forty one on Amazon.com with free super saver shipping if your order's over twenty five dollars. So now they're kind of hooking into buying something else, but you know just whatever. <laughs> Damn it! I, I found a way to rectify this. When you put this in your cart, just also add a Munchkin expansion pack or something. The cheapest one is seven eighty seven, which would be totally up above. Yeah. I was getting messages in the back of my brain long ago it was about 12 or 13 months they kept comparing the word Bob 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 is everywhere Bob is first thing all over the place just look through any phone book and you see you get the same so like the opportunity for overlap whatever I don't know man Bob's floral Bob's auto parts Bob's automotive service Bob's burgers Bob's furniture lot and then down here you're stuck having to find a way to pay an extra seven dollars and, and he's like cents. everybody's dead so just to get a tick out of second shot just to pay the shipping yeah. no you gotta find something that you want to buy on Amazon yeah so you can get some yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so then you get two free two items shipped for free there you go Amazon tips from Craig Lewis Dink. I gave the Bob Dobbs smile yeah Bob He's the iconic symbol of this church. Christianity has the cross. His own Judaica has the star. Theirs is the face of the smiling 50s clip art guy with the pipe Bob in his mouth. Also benefits Have you ever seen from being Sublime's the album, 40 Ounces of Freedom? He's on the disc. Oh, from that, the furthest you know, reaches of the known space. Like we said, he was a salesman. So he studied all sorts of other things. And he actually X's. traveled to Tibet where or he learned all about yetis. Like and yetis are Bob the actual ancestors of the subgenius. Oh, yeah. The members. Yeah, we haven't even control. talked about really what a subgenius is. What is Slack? This on July 5th, 1998, at 7 well, a.m., Slack is exactly what you shall think make a mass landing. Well, yeah. yeah. The children they of Bob shall be rewarded yeah. at this so hole rupture. Like this 
they, they, they also say that the slack is an actual concrete quality in the universe and that it can't really up be defined, in power which reminds and me a little bit of the town, new but homes a gross misinterpretation of it to justify slacking off the sea I think it's a good thing to work to contribute to society and help helping things be better for everyone. Yeah, well, that's, self, that's just what those conspiracy normals want you to do. And Apparently, we in order to break the trend, you don't have to work hard. You just have to be very, very slackful. Oh, and have lots of sex, too. Supposedly, Jehovah One was originally contacting Bob to start a conspiracy. He wanted to start a conspiracy and brainwash the people of Earth and to make them think they had to work for a living. What I don't understand about this, so that means that they've become a proponent no, that's, that's what Jehovah One initially intended for me. But Bob was like, no way, Jose. And he infiltrated it and started a counter I don't understand why they're, why they pray. You know, they, this is their God. Jehovah One is their God. He's not standing for it. And one is not here. Bob is the Bob is the central character. Jehovah One is one of the great old ones. The crafty old ones. Because it's just the deity they choose to. It's just the deity that happens to kind of be here and in charge. We can't and do much about those Bob evil and, you know gods. I mean? So basically, from the they don't other pray side to of the cosmos. Their who fly through the air and through the nebulous less, darkness yeah, of yeah. space. They, they, they are Bob Dobbs, definitely. Space, definitely. My friends, but Bob the infinite inky clouds of nebulae, they fly away. on their membranous the leathery wings, is, holding in their coiling you tentacles you shiny steel cylinders, each one hard containing hard. what was once really a human soul, what was once a member of the Church of the Subgenius. But enough of this. You don't want to hear about this. I think they can offer you. Hooligans. Uh, 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 so yeah, what is a subgenius? A subgenius is not necessarily somebody that's less than a genius. It is kind of that, but not really. That's not what it means. They're substitute geniuses. They stand in for Stephen Hawking. Yeah, they appearance. No, no. Who are they? An expertly trained sandwich maker. Uh, I, the best way to put it is they're, they're people that get it. Land. You know, whatever. They see past the bullshit. Earth's under. They're individuals, and they possess their control. And more importantly than that, they descend from yetis. Well, supposedly, it's about 40,000. And they say it's about 10% of the population. Less than a million. The founder of the religion, I understand, he stated that there was 40,000. Okay, but a lot of people. But their name is. Yeah. I mean, also, he said that about a quarter of that 40,000 were ordained ministers of faith. So, don't you think it's kind of weird that 25% of the people are ordained in the church of the church? Don't you think a lot of things about this religion are kind of weird? I mean, that's the least yeah, weird thing that's about this religion. Please don't take any disrespect. I think the church of the subject is pretty good. I have nothing against it. If you're going to take offense to this, you A, put it on podcast, and B, like seriously, just for a minute, it's hard for me, like I'm trying to, what gets me is the fact that they are an actual organized religion, does that mean they're tax exempt? Following our track. <laughs> they're they're admittedly for profit, so. Well, yeah. I mean, all you have to do is pay it out and they'll make your minister. All Probably world. Not. Without they slack. Stated on their subgenius.com website. But what is the commodity kind of with, with which Bob will bargain Earth's fate? Some claim he is the souls that, 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 of like, his followers. The true subgenius like, does not you know, question Bob's wisdom us, just in us. such matters. Yeah, we have only our simple faith Bob founded the that heaven will be ours if we so only believe. That's one secret Ironically, alpha. his mission will not be to sell Earth, but to prevent Earth being sold and transformed into a kind of stuck space. Don't forget that Bob has come to... Uh, so, 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 the end of the world, July 5th, 1998. 
Pay okay. to know when most really Americans will have hangovers, but it's not just for the Americans, it's for everyone in the world. Yeah, right. That is, that is why, his quote unquote dad yeah, start smoking, start drinking, and live it up. Yeah. Start fornicating as if your very life depended on it. So it's kind of like a but this plan will succeed only if conditions are just Maybe. right at the I appointed time. Able to talk to Otherwise, him. dark forces of antiquity will be awakened from the this number of eons and rise again from Atlantis to rule our world in their sizeless grip. These primordial elementals, the Elder Gods, have countless demonic interplanetary moons carrying out their unholy schemes. They even control Bob's own evil twin brother, Mysterious substance Dobbs, have a frap, have a frap, have a With all his powers, have a could Dobbs have really be defeated have by a these for me. Ah, but you must not underestimate the conspiracy. Its weapons are so insidious, even the human conspiracy leaders are unaware of them. The fact that the conspiracy itself is ignorant that it is a conspiracy gives it such control over our minds that the very thought becomes unthinkable. <laughs> Do we have a country you gotta origin? think about your own mind. Hey, That's part of, of the problem. You gotta think about your own mind. You cannot history. wash soap. You gotta see really your own eyes. You cannot run from your own legs. You cannot hide from your stupid guy. You cannot hide from God who's bearing you. He's bearing all hell. Who the hell is my? She ain't got no legs. My legs on fire. No, I don't think so. The divinity and temerity of the human mind itself does all. Oh yeah, that's like the evil ones may just lean back and watch the little humans march gladly, even proudly. Entirely wild around but we too must be vigilant. They believe in all for, sorts of things. Thanks like to the different false slack stuff from bombarding us daily, it is terrifyingly easy for even a sub genius to slip back some of into normality. Origin, but more we of live in a dangerous being world. Used by the conspiracy the to spy powers on of people. pinkness. The conspiracy are is trying to lead everyone away from slack by making yes, them work they're hard locked and in a death for struggle. the conspiracy and all that. Sometimes all over the pink gets all over the slack. Really? Really? You should, you should consider it. You should consider it. Go, brother! Come on, come on, come on! I thought you were about to say, I'll take that as a compliment. Like, no, 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 like, please don't. No. I'll, put that in, I'll put that in consideration. And I'll put that in consideration. It's interesting, though. It, it was huge in the counterculture movements. You know what I mean? Of like the late 80s, the early 90s. Gen X and shit. Yeah. Word of mouth got passed through a lot of like zines, you know what I mean? But like punk rock you zines, you know, like photocopied that pamphlets awesome. that were passed around in underground circles and at our passed labs, those around started we Texas, only spread the from there. A lot of you know, DJs and people no. and the music and stuff got into Children. it and comedians. It was, it was really big. Come on, who? VHS and the purest what blend of money of your needs can buy. To Grown right here by our special process. Laziness and, and the slack. A process in use you know, since grunge, our first rock, mom and pop operation. crowd of the early 90s. Who are right? we? It's, it, it seems makes to sense. be a lot of, a lot of the awkward, normal people. interesting people that are all the most different normal walks of life, people in the world. Kind of awkward and weird and they're individuals. And that's a cool, that, that's a cool thing. It's a good thing. Uh, the movement was blamed for the famous World but Peace not Virus, quite the as first normal Macintosh as virus you. that uh, Jordan, look around was, you. Was, of course, look at what they've done to the things that you love. They took Elvis Presley. They turned him pink. Virus. They made him into a ah, black monster. There you go. There's the you can make Alex, Alex, People say to us, people worry yeah, that the church of the subgenius is an anti-American church. It's a subversive church. Children, we are the first real Americans. I don't know if we should. I don't know if that's a good we idea. I'm hit or miss on most of Before they took it away from us, but and this one, to I gotta tell you, this, is, this is, just feels true. This is, as this long as you can't news. buy slack, the buy conspiracy that. cannot win. Seems like I don't think anyone's arguing that. That's oh. it's so weird. Words to sentences is boggling my mind. And they they state that oh. the fact that. Thank you. 
to it. And you and I are two of the people that wanted to break away from that routine. That's why we started the podcast. Because we're out there right now. The routine. But not me and, you know, getting a 40 hour work job and just doing the grind at an office or whatever. That's just that not for us. So does that mean we should follow these teachings that join? Well, see, uh, no, I'm, that's where we differ. I love work. I love working. I love both of my jobs. They're fucking awesome. I don't want to totally quit. I would like to maybe take more time off to work on my creative stuff and make a little money off my creative stuff too. But I think people should work. I think it's good for people to work. It's healthy for them. It's healthy for other people. Dragging so that's where I think they're wrong. It's Slack. Well, that, in that sense, of I mean, I, it's not like it I want to not work kiss. and only you know, do podcasts for the rest of my life and just like or that. Like, we, you, have to, you have to work. I just, if I had the Which opportunity, I would try to make, you know, make my life out of my creativity or eternal have slack just a small the side job, rule you know, of for sure, yeah. I guess. Or are I mean, the it's, it's a good thing to have slack in your life. A lot of people don't. This is all time time to you say it's and that's when they wake up in the morning and they're 35 years old. Jesus began to yeah. give to yeah, them the signs yeah, of his coming in the end of the age. And one of the signs he referred to was the abomination of desolation that was spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Well, exactly as the Lord did in the dark, triggered the deluge that destroyed the earth in his day, and that it's which, uh, very highly po possible uh, that uh, when this all uh, takes let's, place, let's take uh, that a great cataclysmic judgment will do that very thing. God will destroy this country, city, and America. Number two, purchase goods and products sold by the church. Well, we've got a new one too then. So, does that mean they sell like the peanut butter? I buy some genius peanut butter. You know what? No. Maybe I wouldn't buy some genius peanut butter. Might be nice to have a cup of shit. Gee, I can't wait till that Bob Time train comes around the bend. Oh, look out, son. Number three. Rebel against law and order. It's frightening, isn't it? It's number four. Rip the world and everything around Is that for real? Yes, that's where we be with kind of Because, look, I'm not descended from anybody who doesn't like stupid little sheep here either. They need to be around uh, for balance of the age. You know, can't just kill people off. Yeah, hey, man, have a hard job. That's part of what society is. It's protecting people. It's stupid. From natural selection. And last but not least, number five, exploit fear as a tool against the conspiracy. Census of people. It, I don't, it, it, you don't want to sound pretentious, though. You don't want to sound like you're better than people. But, but other thing to be above the flock, yeah. down the average, and on top of all the people. Yeah, it's good to aim above average. You know what I mean? Like, try to low pass. Unless they're Twilight fans, then we'll know then whether you really believed in Bob Dobbs or not. And hey, hey, if you really did descend from Yeti and you have superior qualities because of that, that's awesome. But if you mostly hear, if you look down. Of people that didn't, line. that's called racism. Hell is so, life. Ooh, got you there. You can't do that. You can't do that. Land the land 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 racist. And when the demons, oh, when the demons try to There's where, to tell where you miss out, too, because even most other racists take other racists, too. Oh, one day yeah, you'll find yourself up to your neck in false truth, false sex, false jobs, false money. They don't see it. Yeah, say, basically, racists of other races hate racists Bob? of other races, where's so they Bob? don't see the faces, you mean, and they act kind of tasteless. They're really and, and they ain't going places. A conspiracy? They're just trapped in the mixes. You mean? I think you lost. They're really <laughs> what? I'm not the rapper. A Bob? There's a lot of you mean, subgenius holidays. You mean? I could have had a slack, year. and I blew it. It's going to be up to you. It's going to be up to you. What are you going to let happen to this planet? What are you yeah, going to do about oh, it? By the way, Bob's going to let you October decide what to do about it. <laughs> just give me two straight days. Is that <laughs> what you're going to... Are you just going to sit there? They 
Bob won't even have to do it. Bob won't even have to see that the end of the world happens properly. It'll happen by accident. And there are a lot of well-meaning people that are involved in this thing. But it is satanic. It was predicted that July 5th, 1998, we talk about Christianity and Satan is very brilliant at maneuvering the church into a position that is opposed to God. Which are viewers from Planet X would arrive and subgenius leaders and members would be transported on spaceships. The feminist dupes of the conspiracy charge that not enough members are women. Yeah, Bob X. would agree to that. And the neutrinos. Indeed, oh, he come would on. say I join this there will Why never be happen? enough. <laughs> yeah, it was basically a joyful but hell. But at least the ones we have are all women. And, and Bob, Bob, Bob is all man. <laughs> While they're the looking James down The James Bond is in that. The most dashing like religious pimp. leader of his time. And then they would be transformed. I just get the a true son or daughter of Bob knows that our universe is no longer that old jetting outlook, but an active, tumultuous, squirting universe bent on rampant reproduction and easy greed. The false cults may try to teach personal transformation, psychic development, human potential, but Bob goes straight for the glands and seeks to amplify the self to bloat the abnormality potential of his Only through excess can one contact the lower self where the real decision is made. Don't just eat a hamburger, eat the hell out of it. Oh, what the hell was that? And that was the advanced initiate, once freed from conspiracy programming as well as the worldly goods that enslaved him, makes his pilgrimage to Knobstown, the church's fabulous walled encampment deep in the jungles of Malaysia. There, the initiate's third nostril is surgically opened by psychic surgeons, allowing him or her to swiftly the psychic stench of those around him. He masters the sciences of schizophreniatics and memory editing, creating a clean slate on which Bob may write. The art of extra meditation is taught, whereby the mind is voided on the great throne of relief. You don't use your mind to think about your religion. What is it that truly sets Bob apart from other would-be holy men himself by gurus? For Bob has always existed. There have always been Bob. Every epoch of man's history has had its Bob. Most are what he would call good Bob. Others? Well, we needn't dwell on that. The traveling salesman jokes of mythology are based on his early So many ask, is Bob God? The Slackmaster himself vehemently denies that he is the Messiah. His mission is merely to show us how to live with our sins. So yeah, and Bob as I said, there's a holiday for every day. There's some other big holidays. But even the days that don't have big holidays. So there's 365 days a year. 365 holidays at the Well, yeah, I was trying to explain that. But that's what a year is, Craig. Yes, that's what every day of the year means. And they should get holiday pay for every day. Every single time off. The ultimate slackest. The guy that can convince his boss that he needs holiday pay. And get the time off for every day of the year. The hectic pace of modern life demands disposable savings. Come on, it's Dracula. Day. Sort of, we why you work do it yourself? Every sort of resentment you think from a book you're reading, to a smudge on the corner of a page of that book, 66th day. to a TV star you're currently enamored of, to a break that just misses the crust of your skull that falls from the corners of a rotting door, to the collection that's dripping next up in the decaf that you won't come to offer. Make them have to be aware of an ass like, you're entitled, I thought, give me that water, damn, a million people are going to have to be in front of me, consecutively. Skeptical reporters were surprised when scientists from the MIT Artificial Intelligence Laboratory corroborated the story. Deserve to be able to say that it's 65 days off your days. Turns out it was 6 minus 6 generations. For the memory of a great spiritual leader like Muhammad Ajahn Nadir, it's totally corrupted by the people who are talking about it. If that's a thing, yes. I would love to. They may be thinking that their money is free. So but there is the days that aren't a great accompanied by a major holiday, holiday. They, they usually just celebrate a saint. There from are the church, from hundreds the of canonized saints. Uh, too many to list, but I would like to look at some of them, because there's some pretty cool people that have been canonized as official saints. Can you help the flock? Can I tell you my Friends are going to try to sell you Bob Dobbs on a silver plaque, a clean up Bob, a fancy Bob, a newfangled Bob, not quite as spooky and abnormal as he once was. My friend, you best fear the day when J.R. Bob Dobbs becomes as wholesome as he looks, because on that day, my friend, your paycheck shall crumble, your free room condo shall fall. The You'll be turning your face in agony, trying to say, to Bob, Bob, come back to me. Like they five. must be taught that Bob is not the answer, and neither is yeah. anything else. It's like, it's <laughs>
I thought that was the Flying Circus. But Monty <laughs> Python <laughs> actually <laughs> is a uh, canonized saint. Don't worry, the whole you know, comedy tune, I guess. Yeah. Saint Monty Python. No, it doesn't want followers. Yeah. Only their money. So right. And so we must purge our ranks of the unclean. Deprogram our bodies on the canonized The method he advocates are drastic. For he has commanded, you shall do as I say, and think for yourself, or kill me. Saint Wonder Woman. Could it be Saint that the blood George on this white man has been awesome. shed for nothing? Saint Hercules. A man Bob had regarded as one of his most trusted friends. Brandon Dyer. Can you see the show? Can you see the show? Over there, shot. Bob Dog. Saint Buddha. And what kind of liquor are you drinking? Saint Salvador Dali. Saint Alec Guinness. I like that it's but so many questions remain unanswered. Some Kenobi. investigators insist that puzzling evidence was what to do. A uh, Saint Neil Gaiman, or a concealed godly of trained gunmen, clumsy attempt to cover uh, only served to win John the Twelfth. Claims blown, not not even given the finding of the Hague Commission. The Hague Commission, that bunch of frauds, those fools. Uh, Saint Alan apes. Moore. You know, Saint Alan Moore. I guess I'm not a personal friend of mine. And his wife Helen. Water skiing. Saint Mike Foley. Yes, Helen. On that black day, the church was left reeling in shock. So apparently, it's not that hard. Without the guidance of Bob, the church is still like they just kind of had this this meeting, and they were like, "Well, we gotta come up with a bunch of saints." But many wonder, Werewolf. is Bob really dead? Done, Can he die? Terrible. Was the whole murder an elaborate ruse, Let's staged by Dobbs himself, Carlo. in which an unwitting that decoy lookalike was sacrificed so that Bob could continue waging uh, the good fight the in secrecy? What's your name, man? My friends, the conspiracy is like this big machine that's just going towards the edge of a cliff. And so far, Bob Dobbs has been the real monkey wrench that was slowing it down. Well, ever since that alleged assassination, that monkey wrench may not be in that big machine anymore. You know what that means? That means you have to pick up what Bob Dobbs left off. Will you be the last Bob, or will you surrender to hopelessness? Remember, this might just be his way of testing. Actually, Saint these choices Godzilla. were already made for you at the beginning of time. So, do it. join the church and gaze upon your own naked destiny, standing Saint proud Rodin. before God. Saint Rodin. 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 Saint Lucifer. Okay, man. See how there's so many different saints. I swear upon the altar of God, eternal hostility to every form of tyranny over the mind of man. That is why the clergy oppose me. That is not all that is on Jefferson. Jefferson Monument in Washington except the last sentence. They left that out in the interest of brevity. So let us march onward, harvesting the souls of the infidels, keepers of bloody limbs, for in this nameless mission, our destinies are written. My favorite. Saint Pope. All 649 of them. Soon to be more come up to it. Yes. Yesterday, Saint the church Pokemon. of the genius was only a few brave fools tugging at the shoelaces of the Colossus. Today, it has already become the Zorro of world religion, scratching a bloody bee on the bloated bottoms of the conspiracy. Like Christians. This whole thing called the new church is just, just so crazy that, that it just might work. The conspiracy has 50,000 nuclear Jesus weapons, Christ and the church of the subgenius, we've only got three. But yet we dare to fight them anyway, and that's the miracle of it. You can see it's always been the crazy people. The crazy people. Who are coming up to stand up against the Colossus. 
represents Teddy all Rock Spin. <laughs> he represents more than just a man with a pipe and a know-it-all grin. He represents the quest of all new guys for freedom. In talking to most of geniuses today, you'll find an unshakable faith that their high epoch will rise again. But this time, he will come not as gentle teacher and salesman, but as an avenging angel, meeting out the wrath of Jehovah One upon the guilty and the innocent alike, cleansing the earth with the divine radioactive all, scouring all, purifying annihilation of his boundless love. No, friends. None Some people like to call this church of the subgenius a joke. Oh, Hitler, a joke. Hitler oh, it might be a joke. It just might be the greatest joke ever Jesus told. Like yes, Earth can make it cheap. for the first one. Like, With like unquestioning faith in God's word, the end of the world can easily become your personal stone to prosperity. You're like, 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 you said, kill all the infidels. You realize that everybody else is wrong. You're right. I said, I said, you say it to be an old friend. Why not? Release your soul to the church for safety and intuit is needed in the great body and church. No, no, no. Just so there's. A couple cool ones, Mark Allen, Mother's Ball. But what can you do? Bob is the gun, and you are the bullet. The showdown is fast approaching. Uh, the church is still unknown, but its infectious doctrines spread across continents. <laughs> Church of the Old Wave, Temple Lodge, is housed in this Paul Dallas Rubens, skyscraper, from which God's secret mandates are issued to his agents in the dreaded Brotherhood of God. But this mighty so edifice represents but the tip of a wandering road. The, the words, hymns, and sound effects of God are disseminated on a weekly basis to thousands of devout radio listeners in most major cities, even as far away as China. Yeah, just just in case people don't know. Oh, if you're not, they may be. It's being watched for a channel accident. Every now and then, microphone flies back around the other side of the planet. But being in China, have to listen on shortwave radio. Very hard to notice, so we switch the speed of music for the background for the signal of the show. As we like to figure out the format, the first thing is white. He's also in a deep music video oh, in love with that. Christians are tuning in for the next three hours. Yeah, did you ever stop to think that this show just made me a little episode? Hey, man, a show inside a larger show? Yeah, yeah. Inside yeah. somehow, he he inside a larger show? Spectacular, lucrative, spiritual, sub genius revivals move from town to town, 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 town like loading crap games. Always a few steps ahead of the police. Here, black wired preachers and ladders perform head wanting, still distancing, and both healing and sickening of boarding schools, depending on the needs. Dozens of church musical combos called Doctor of Bands after the original Doctor of Bob Arkansas deprogram entire paying audiences, even while rejecting out music notions of rhythm and melody. Uh, old ass Atari and SD until the authorities catch on, even like common moments can purchase the word of Bob itself in the numbers, the legendary book of the subgenius, available in bookstores everywhere. But the only certain way to receive Bob's teachings in uncut form is to tie it directly to the church. For a suggested money like offering of only $20, and to feel about one more of the six dollars you will be ordained as a card-carrying minister, and receive the huge official mention of church and religion doctrine, the Stark Fist of Removal. I just like to say a few words about the Stark Fist of Removal. This is an official newsletter of the church. It's got all kinds of great stuff in it. It's got the proof of Bob. It's got a picture of Bob with Ronald Reagan in there. It's got the all-important instructions to the subgenius. Illiterate can purchase their choice, dozens of installation workers at and there's even a line of casual subgenius wear to fit every size or budget. Some purchase thousands of Bob's handy pamphlets in which to recruit the worthy and to perplex the normal, to fill their minds with questions, questions that only Bob can answer through his chosen apostles, his fishers of water, and what he has learned, merely another tool of the conspiracy, except when he gains power by passing from your pocket to Bob. This is the first industrial church uh, we're going to tackle off scheme um, with... I don't want to bottle it up. Profit it's, uh, like we we said, we're profits they're getting at something. Do you know what at? We can do. Do you? I guess if that's the truth, I don't care who you are, where you come from, if you haven't sent your $20 into Bob, don't burn. Mother Teresa, I don't care how many people she's helped. I don't know about that. She hasn't sent her $20 into Bob Dodd, don't burn in hell. And Bob offers a guarantee that can't be beaten: eternal salvation or triple your money. Watch a Monty Python marathon on Bob. I say, if you take anything from this Let him into your life. Let Bob protect you. He wants to protect you. He must protect you. He has to protect you. Jehovah One says Bob will protect you. If you send a dollar to Post Office Box 140306, Dallas, Texas 75211, one dollar for salvation. One dollar. Now that you've seen what you've seen, do you do with us in the saucers on X Day or instead we be left crawling through the glowing rubble of Alpha to the end? In the sweet name of Bob, you must be saved, even if it kills. It was it was a great time. Everybody will enjoy it all one hour and twenty six minutes. Well, it was for the man. The world's greatest salesman. Yeah, he had to find a way to get the shackles from my feet. I never found his gone. The mother of all the false prophets I know. That's from the love game. She knew that the first shot was gonna be the last shot. But his kind of heart got tight. The gas was all through the night. And I'm gonna pay the key break. You know the
Not a Yeti, motherfucker. That's too long. That's, I don't think you understand how. <laughs> I, I works think that's more than 146 <laughs> characters. Remembering itself. everything. If you, if you, except if you don't use the newfangled Facebook the Omega Contingency Plan, you can always send us an old fangled email. Fairpoint Podcast at Yahoo.com. We realize yeah. that uh, and if Jim Jones could talk 900 people and kill himself, we could talk 900 people and send us a dollar. You make the money? Backslash Fairpoint Podcast. That's our channel. Like and subscribe us there. Okay, well, we're well into September now, and October is fast approaching. Halloween is on the horizon. And we didn't get a chance to do anything for Halloween last year, so this is really our big, our first big uh, Halloween production that we put out. So, and we're excited about it. We have a lot of great things coming to you on Scarepoint. Scarepoint. Raise up. This is your last big chance to win that whole show. October. Five episodes is coming. All Kiss all your all calendars goodbye and prepare yourself to greet the men from Planet X in power and glory at the coolest campground in the United States. With Sideshow Marvels, yeah. Swamp Vegas, Hashtag Dr. Man, Combustion, Trade Prairie Swift, Frost Enhancement Workshops, After Beating, uh, Psychic good. Surgery, Human Fights, Every Live Freaks of Nature, and Passive Casualties. Facebook and Metsburg ended up winning cook offs. Private Lipco, Sex Art Seminars, Self Mutilating Creatures, and Oddly Normal Seeming People, Sex Goddesses, Elder Gods, and Excess. Next day is coming. Are you ready for the finals? Which one of the names? Spaz Outlaw Holiday Graphics, or the last round? Can you handle Judgment Day? Will you see her while the world ends? Or will you get slapped? Do you like that question? Of course, I'm sure. Brought to you by J.R. Bob Dodd of the Church of the Subgenius. See www.subgenius.com for more information. Experience the anxiously awaited moment. The nail biting suspense. Without the visuals, we still bring you. Only thirty dollars from SecretRoomMultimedia.com. I'm Nathan Capisser, and I'm still the Reverend Craig Lewis. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks. With the free super saving shipper, <laughs> shipper, the free super savings shipping <laughs> on orders over super savings oh. from the seashell seashore. <laughs>